Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Corky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Let's take these magic trees down, I fancy a different smell today. Uh, you've probably seen me video with Rico and Terry. Uh, they're going over a, a space of 24 hours, they're doing 1500 views plus, so I'm really pleased with it. We're going to go for blue blue magic tree today. I'm really pleased with how it's going. The views are coming on really quick and people are starting to take notice. So thank you very much uh, to all you people who are liking and subscribing and bigging my channel up. Can I just give a big shout out to uh, my good pal Dempsey Whale. How are you doing Dempsey? DNA Meals in Barnsley, Rotherham, Doncaster area. They do deliveries. Fantastic food for all you boxers out there or people who just want to eat healthily he's uh, gonna just say that Dempsey is a B BSc sport science graduate in nutrition and food and all that carry on so he also went down from about 15 stone to 10 so he knows what he's on with doesn't he but uh, right, this video is gonna be about Kel Brook against I was gonna say Crawford Ashley a bit and it? it's Terence Crawford isn't it I don't really know what to say really about Kelbrook that hasn't already been said. Everybody knows I was a massive Kelbrook fan. I thought he could have been our Terry Norris. Terrible Terry Norris, but it hadn't worked out for him, has it? For the simple reason that I hold the people around Kelbrook responsible. His stepdad Terry, Dominic Ingle, and people like that. That's who I hold responsible and Eddie Hearn for being greedy. Now what they did to Kelbrook putting him in with Golovkin, in my opinion ruined a great fighter but I don't think he'd have took that fight if he didn't have all that stick on social media for you Jojo Dans and uh, people people like that you know that he were fighting after he won the title I'm not going to slag off Frankie Gavin because I'm a massive Frankie Gavin fan and I think Kel got him at the right time but they shouldn't have even they shouldn't have been in the same ring Frankie Gavin's a lightweight isn't he in my opinion a world class lightweight but he fought Kel Brook at well to it, but the point I want to make is Kel got loads of stick for them defences when he beat Sean Porter and I think he tried to correct it with the Triple G fight. He had people in his ear saying, Kel, you're a beast really, you're a super middleweight, you're a super middle, you spar for Arch. That might be true, but the point I want to make is Kel Brook, in my opinion, He's a welterweight. He fought welterweight all his career. Your body just doesn't turn round after all those years of being a professional uh, and say, do you know what, I'm a middleweight. But not only did they put him in with a middleweight, jumping from, from welter, I mean, look at it like this. Welterweight is here, then we have super welter. So welterweight, 10 stone, 7, seven. Super, wel super welter, 11 stone. And then we've got 11 stone 6, middleweight. So he jumped from welterweight to middle. Uh, for that's for all you Matchroom FC that don't understand it now. Can I just say that we have weights for a reason? Because fighters are not superheroes. For example, Nazim Harid's not going to fight Tyson Fury, is he? Because one's a, a small guy and one's a massive guy. Weight divisions are there to protect you. Now... Was Kelbrook protected? No. Eddie Hearn didn't want to lose his deposit, did he, on Arena when Eubank Jr. pulled out at Golovkin fight. So he already had his plan B, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? But what happened? One cheekbone got, one eye socket got half broken, the other one got proper shattered. They repaired one and Errol Spence finished the next one off. But they said Kelbrook's a middleweight, didn't they? Super stroke, super middle. He's big, he's a beast. They said all that. And they'd never fight at Welter again, but why didn't they vacate? Because they knew they had an insurance policy, because Eddie Hearn likes to play God, doesn't he, with fighters. So what did they do? They had Kel Brook go back down to Welter. How many people do you see go back down in weight and, and, and actually win world title fights? There's not many, is there? I think Jermaine Taylor did it, finished his career as a champion, but how many more can you say do, did it? How many? There's not many, is there, really? So... I thought he was very dangerous and like I said he put him in with Errol Spence straight after Golovkin finished then so who's advising this guy Kel Brook and now they're going to put him in with Terence Crawford 
We saw what he did to Amir Khan, didn't we? The guy is a surgeon. He's a technician. He's a surgeon. Call it what you want. But I think it's suicide for Kel, but I think it's last throw at dice just to get a few quid in his pocket. So all these people who were advising him, they're not in the ring. Dominic Ingle's not in the ring, is he? Dominic Ingle had one fight as an amateur and he jumped on the floor and he said, Dad, get me effing out of here. That's a famous true story. That's a famous true story. Dad, get me effing out of this effing ring. And that will within 10 seconds. So, Dominic Ingle's got the art of a breadcrumb. So, who was he to give people advice? Lifting dumbbells don't mean you're a fighter. You can't lift, you can't put muscles on chins, can you? All right. So, Dominic Ingle should be ashamed. But he's a pimp anyway, and he's just to hope for a pound out, won't he? And Kel's stepdad, he's not in ring taking punches, is he? Do you know what I mean? Who's looking out for Kel Brook's best interest? Because you know in years to come, he's going to hate these people. He'll hate them. But more than anything, he'll hate himself for being allowed to be talked into it. I know what fight ex-fighters are like when they look back on their career. They look back on the good times and the bad times. They look for who were at fault and what went wrong. And when the dust settles in about 15 years, and he'll look back and he'll say, well, I wasn't looked after properly. I could have been... A runner bean. I could have been. He could have been like I've just said, Terry Norris or Terence Crawford. He could have reigned supreme if he'd have just stayed at that weight. Do you know what I mean? That, that's my opinion. That's, I, I just think it's over for Kel, and and, and I think it's sad to it's see no somebody going out to America to get to get a few, just to get a few quid. Hashtag just to get a few quid. I don't want to hear all that. Like what we heard after the Golovkin fight. Well, you know, he had a go in that and his stock's gone up. I don't want to hear people say his stock's gone up. I, people are saying Dillian White's stock's gone up. How has his stock gone up? Fighting fighting uh, a 41-year-old bloke. His stock went up because they were winning fight. He ended up leaving on a stretcher with oxygen. oxygen. That do not mean your stock's gone up. When your stock goes up, it's like Mickey Ward against Gatti. Where you just saw a great fight and you weren't really bothered who won. Because it was just a great fight, a great tear up. That's when your stock goes up, not when you're leaving on back of a stretcher. That's not your stock going up, that's your stock going down. Because he's now in a crossroads fight, so how's his stock gone up? The man that got up at eight seconds. I mean, did you see Eddie squirming in that interview with Coogan? Fair play to Coogan Cassius, right? For asking that question because... Did you see Eddie's response? He just laughed through it, didn't he? He just laughed through it like, I don't give a shit. He just laughed through it like he weren't even bothered. You know, he's just lying, telling lies. You know, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Telling big whopper, big whoppers, big massive whoppers. But, uh, you know, you know, it is what it is. And, and I just want to put a touch on the John Fury interview with, with Coogan, where he said near the end about... Dylan White were losing us and blah de blah and he wasn't losing the fight, he were winning it. So I think he got a bit tongue tied there, John. But I can go on forever picking fault with what people say. I get things wrong, but I'm first to put my hand up when I get things wrong. I don't continue the lie like Eddie Earn has. But to be fair to Eddie Earn, he's cut it dead and nipped it in bud. I just wish he would do that with this narrative that he keeps spinning about my name's Eddie Hills, a 4-0 super heavyweight amateur, 4-0 four, four star, free by way of. Eddie, when are you going to come out and explain that? When are you going to come out, Eddie, and tell us about that? We want to know who you fought, where it happened, who your trainer were, who your opponent were, who your opponent's trainer were, sorry, where it happened at, and people who were in the crowd. And we want to see footage. Your dad's had his own production company for 30-odd years, hasn't he? Where's the footage of his only son having his amateur fights? Barry Earn hasn't got footage of his only son in his four amateur bouts. Are you having a laugh with me? Eh? But I bet you've got amateur, I bet you've got footage of Eddie doing egg and spoon race in private school. But you haven't got footage of uh, that'd have been ten years before, wouldn't it? But you haven't got footage of him icing people in the ring aka eddie hills the ice man three and oh i mean that's a 75 percent ko ratio that's better than the great carl frotchers that in it so look it is what it isn't in it so all right 
So thanks for liking and subscribing and sharing the video, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Hashtag team players.